Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another lock tutorial video. Um, lock jewels that is. These are a couple that I made in my previous video. DIY lock jewels with embellishments being the beads. If you'd like to see how I achieve this look, you can check out my other video. I'll have it linked above. I have two other videos. Actually, one is simple lock jewel without embellishment and then with embellishment, which will feature these. So it goes to the side. Right here, you can see peeking out in the corner are my tools. This is what I use. If you don't have these, don't worry, the main thing you need is something the size of your lock to wrap your coil around. You need something to file down those edges because you don't want any snags in your hair. If you don't have a file like this, you can use a nail file or a piece of sandpaper. And, <coughs> excuse me, you will also need something to cut the wire with. Um, depending on the thickness of wire, you can cut it with like a pair of scissors or something if you don't have this. But since I do make these to sell, I have my own Etsy shop. I will link that below for you to check out. I like to use these tools because I like a neat, clean, and professional look for my clients. So this is 16 gauge wire copper. I always use copper. I just, it is my preference. But there are other style wire. There are other style wires that you can use. But this is my preference. This is a 16 gauge, as I've mentioned. Now the gauge of the wire will depend on a lot of factors. I recommend using a smaller gauge wire if you have smaller locks or braids, fine hair, because you don't want to put too much weight or stress onto your hair. And yeah, that's that. So let's make it with the gold tone copper wire. Now this is copper wire. All your copper wire is going to look like this, whether it has gold tone over top, silver color over top blue color i've seen different colors whatever color is over top when that color wears away and it will wear away over time just out of general use moisture from your hair all of those factors this is what you're going to have underneath so keep that in mind i like that because i believe it creates a whole different look for your piece and your piece evolves over time so i really like the copper so let's go ahead and use this we're going to take a piece of wire um, I don't really measure it. I used to. I kind of can do it by eye now. Depending on how long you want the coil to be, you want to use about 10 to 12 inches of wire. This is probably about a, about 12 inches here, give or take. So you have your wire. I cut it with my uh, wire clippers here or scissors, whatever you have. You want to go like this just run your hands the length of it be careful because the end where you cut it can prick you and this work hardens the wire it and just you stiffens it and yes you can it stiffens it and that is one i'm back so you want to run your fingers across it a couple times it work hardens it that just basically means it toughens it up a little bit because this wire is very malleable meaning you can bend and flex it as you please which is good for the project but you want it to be long lasting so we've done that let's set that to the side this video focuses on a lock charm with an embellishment it's going to also be a bead this is a natural stone this is a lock piece azul i believe it's called i'll annotate it if i'm incorrect and so this has a hole in it but it's very small i don't even know if it'll pick up on camera it's super small so unlike my previous video i can't just thread the wire through here now there's two things that you could do um you could use a thinner wire but as i said i like this gauge of wire and for the purposes of this video i'm going to wrap this as if it had no hole in it at all okay so let's set that right there we're going to take our round nose pliers first I'm skipping steps here you want to file the ends of these because they're very they're very pointy they will snag your hair so you're gonna take that file sandpaper whatever you have okay and you're gonna run this across here I'm not gonna worry about getting it done perfectly for the purposes of this video 
But what I do when I'm making it for a client, I file it, I drag it across the back of my hand. You see that scratch? If it scratches you, it's not ready. Keep going. Okay, so you're gonna wanna do that to both ends where you have both, where you've cut it. So you wanna do that to both ends, make sure they're nice and straight, okay? So now you wanna take your round nose plier and you wanna take one end of this and you wanna turn like so. And that is going to create this little loop that you see right there, okay? So take the flat nose pliers and hold that, squeeze it so it's flat, and then you're gonna start rolling it up like a kind of like a cinnamon roll. You want that 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 look. So it's kind of difficult at first to get it started, but once you get it going. Sometimes I even take the, the round nose pliers back and go that way. So just going to keep wrapping around, wrapping around. Once you get it going, I find it easier just to use my hands. So I'm going to just keep rolling and rolling. And then you're going to end up with trying to make the best way for you to see this. There you go. See that little that circle? You see that? This is what you want. So, I'm gonna keep rolling and rolling that. Now, this is important because this is gonna hold your embellishment that does not have a hold in it. So, I'm gonna place this on top of here. You want it to be big enough that this, your bead in this case fits inside the swirl. So let me come up closer so you can see that size-wise. Once we know that that fits, just for good measure, let's do a couple extra twists. Let's do a couple extra twists, okay? So that's what you want for that. So at this point, you have this swirl. So now what you wanna do is take the flat nose pliers and you wanna grab Push it down a little bit with your finger so you can grab it. Watch your nails. I just snagged myself. Okay. What you're doing is creating what's called a cage, a wire cage, to hold the bead. Okay? So at this point, you have like a little nest for your bead. See that there? It's completely holding it right there. Okay, so now we know that that's the right size that we need. So now we have to be able to secure the remainder of this with the rest of the cage. Now if I was just making a cage, you start the same process on this end and meet in the middle. For this purpose, since I still want a coil, I'm gonna take my hands and create a kink right here, okay? I'm gonna loop it around, I'm gonna take the, the wire pliers, round nose pliers, and I'm gonna go like this and create the loop. This is going to give me my loop that I started the other cinnamon swirl with right here. This loop, that's what that gives me, the center point for that. So now this is the part you're gonna pay a little bit close of attention. So, this piece needs to stay out straight. This is gonna create your coil, okay? So, do just like you did for the other one. Now, mind you, you're doing this on the opposite side. So, if this top, if your first coil went clockwise, you need to do the other one counterclockwise. So that when you fold it down in half, which I'll show you that it comes together. So, I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, in the first one and I'm gonna keep it flat. Let me get my flat nose pliers here. And you wanna create that coil just like you did on the other side. This one's gonna be a little bit more difficult because it's in the center.
we are doing. So let's get our middle stabilized. And remember, you want to keep this piece straight. Okay? So cover that with your hands so you don't twirl the wrong way. And then you want to take the piece that has the coil on the other end. And that's the piece that you want to wrap around. It's easy to get mixed up. I do too sometimes. You just want to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. So now at this point, let me switch this back down to tell you what you'll have. At this point, you're going to have what looks like an S. Can you see that? You have one swirl going clockwise, the other swirl going counterclockwise, okay? And then you have this piece here, which is going to become your coil. So, again, we're going to take the round nose plier. We're going to slightly pull the coil apart, kind of like a spring. You want that. Um, want that kind of cone shaped look and then you want to take the top portion of the swirl and fold it over like this so at this point you have that see we just folded the top part over so now to get the perfect fit you're going to take that bead that embellishment that you have that does not have a hole in it and we're going to slide it in there okay then we're going to take this top portion of our coil and we're going to pull it down with our fingers. If you need to use the flat nose pliers, you can. Um, usually I can do it pretty well with my fingers. Just smush it together, pull it, pull it, pull it. Okay. And then you have a cage. So you see that? I can shake it around. See that? It's not coming out. So now I have my embellishment inside of that coil. You see that? And depending on how close you want these to be together, as you see, I can push it like that. It brings them closer. I like them to be spread out because I like enough of the bead to be showing. But you can play with that to your own taste. And so here you have that bead, okay? So now, for the coil part, similar to how I've shown in my other video, go take a look at that one. If you need a more step-by-step -step of this, you're going to hold the bead in place. And then I'm going to follow the swirl that's at the top. So I'm going to be wrapping this clockwise. And you just want to start to wrap around your instrument that you're using again I can't say enough make sure you get something that's the size of your lock or braid keep that in mind you don't want to damage your hair at all okay so this one is going to be a short coil because the main importance is the actual um, caging of the bead is what I wanted to show you if you want to have a longer coil piece on your hair you would simply use a longer piece of wire I'd say if you want a longer coil use at least twice so use about probably 20 to 24 inches of coil so and that may be a little much maybe say about 20 inches because normally I would do 10 to 12 so say double what I what then what you would normally use so that you can have a longer piece up here if that's what you prefer so I'm going to wrap, I'm not going to spread it out too far because I want it to be tighter. Just to show you, see how I wrap this? If you wrap it and you decide it's too much space between, don't worry about that being perfect. Take your flat nose pliers and look at that. See? Simple. So don't, don't worry yourself about that part. And so I'm going to get that wrapped around. Get my little end piece here flattened. We just want that to lay flat, nice and flat. And then we're going to slide that off. Give it a little flex. And there you have it. You have your bead that didn't have a hole, so you couldn't run the wire through. 
and then you have a little coil to insert it on your hair. Now, if you want to... Hey guys, so real quick, I wanted to come back in because after I finished with the video, I decided I wanted to stretch this out a bit just so it could have more of a hang in the hair, excuse me. And so this is the amended finished product. All you have to do is hold this right here, hold this part, give it a gentle pull and give a little stretch in there. And I like how that came out It adds a nice dimension. And I've added some photos on the end just so you can see to get an idea of the product in the hair. Now, mind you, these are not all the way up my dread because these are not the size of my dreads. My dreads are bigger than these. But again, I want to give you that example I want to know how this is going to look on your hair that's the point really that i twist it on the dowel on the dowel or whatever you're using so imagine this as your hair this is how it's going to fit this is where your hair goes through so your hair is going to fall behind here and then you have your nice little embellishment that sticks out right there and it's going to sit on your hair like that this is The perfect way to wrap your bead or a shell, whatever it is that you have that you would love to put in your hair, but you can't quite figure out how to. This is the perfect way for that. And bring it in closer so that you can see you have like this nice swirl design all around. So no matter which way it falls, you have a beautiful design. And... You have a beautiful design and you have your stone. That is the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see more videos like this and my other style videos I do as well. I have a little bit of everything. So hit your notification bell as well so you know every time I have a new video and you can come over and check out what I have going on. Thanks for watching once again. And I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to check out my Etsy shop as well. And, yep, I'll see you next time. Bye.